if you are thinking about becoming a mortgage broker, but you have no idea what the CMAP exam is, that's what we're going to be talking about in this video right now. My name is Ash Borland, your mortgage business coach. And today I'm joined by Charlotte Hemingway from Future in Finance. She is a CMAP coach who's helped hundreds qualify as mortgage advisors. So stick around because Charlotte's got some game changing insights to share with us all. So Charlotte, from a trainer's perspective, what is the key role of the CMAP qualifications in the industry because it's a big part of the mortgage industry. It is. So CMAP is designed to give somebody who has no experience or knowledge in financial services a gentle introduction into mortgages. With CMAP 1, probably about 5% of the CMAP 1 exam is mortgages. There's really very little on there because it's all regulation stuff, but regulation is really important in the industry. When you move on to CMAP 2 and CMAP 3, that's where they get into the nitty gritty of, okay, this is what an interest only mortgage is in comparison to a repayment mortgage. This is what the solicitor's role is. This is what you have to be mindful of as a mortgage advisor. The second half or CMAP two and three is geared towards, this is what you will be doing and you will be experiencing day to day. So it is not gonna give you a blueprint as to, okay, if you pass these exams, you will know how to be a mortgage advisor. You can go out and do it, but it's a really good introduction into the space. It's one of those things I always find with CMAP. It's like learning to drive a car. Once you've passed it, you are able to learn how to do the actual job, but you do have to pass it in order to do it. And then how would you explain it to someone who's considering entering the field for the first time? What are some of the biggest challenges that you see new students face when they're trying to start CMAP? Most people just get overwhelmed with the textbook. So what happens is you decide you want to do CMAP. You need to go to the London Institute of Banking and Finance's website and pay for the exam. 223 quid, you drop it and they deliver this. And this is just one of them, there's two in total. They deliver this in the post and they go, okay, good luck, you've got 12 months. And for most people, their biggest failure is they get to this point and they do not know what to do next. So for those guys, I always say, let's make a timeline. When do you want to be seen qualified by? And let's work your studying backwards so you can make sure you get to where you want to be. Because for most people, they're just overwhelmed by the, the how much information is there that they don't know where to start. And stripping it back to go chapter by chapter of the textbook is the best place to start. And it's the smallest little step. When I was trying to get CMAP qualified, I was just trying to use the textbook. I knew that in CMAP 1, there was 25 chapters. So I said, okay, every day I'm going to do half a chapter. So in 50 days, I'll have done the whole textbook and I'll be ready to sit the exam. I didn't realize how hard the exam was going to be and how the questions are worded in a way that mm. really threw me off base, which is why I failed a few times, but so did I. start with a plan of studying. And then once you've got your study plan in place, work through the textbook, then look at the next steps, which would be seeing if you can get some mock papers from somewhere. Usually the LIBF website is the best place to get them. You can get alternatives from other websites. I offer exam style questions as well, but that's the step study plan and then put it into practice. And if you've boxed off both of those, you're probably ready to sit the exam. How do you approach helping somebody decide if it's not for them? Because that's what I found on my channel, that one of the biggest things I've been making content for people in this space, not just people who are already qualified, but actually making people for ones who are considering it, is a lot of the time going, is it right for them? That's a lot of the questions I get. Like, I'm thinking of it, but I'm not sure. How do you approach helping someone navigate that? I think the first thing I will always do is ask them why they're doing it because I'll always get a response somewhere down the line of it's cheaper than a degree. I can potentially get qualified in the space of 10 days. And then read.com says I can earn 60,000 pounds a year from it. Those are not the right people. Mm -hmm. Generally, they're the guys that look at the textbook, realize how hard it is and drop it quite early on. The people who can see their why, and it's generally a change in lifestyle. So they want something that offers flexibility around their kids. They want something that they can work from home with. And to be able to help people with the biggest financial decision of their lives, they're the guys that'll get through it. Yeah, I agree with you on that. The income thing's an interesting one because the what it what people think it's gonna be versus what it actually can be. Like like the, you see that they say that's sixty thousand and I'm lucky enough to be well lucky or unlucky, whatever you want to call it, just I'm just positioned to work with people who are doing six and seven figures in their income. But we all start with no money and it's hard. I think when you see those things, I was doing this on a video recently where it's like, how much money can you earn? That's actually the question. How much money can a mortgage advisor earn? And I was reading those figures and it says 20 to 70,000. And I was thinking, well, to be an employed person and getting 70,000 is very hard and probably going to take you many years to reach that. And to be a self-employed and make six figures, 
that's a lot of work as well. And I think sometimes you say people can go, qualification, 10 days, it's so oversimplified. It really is. I've had a student who did both master classes. She did two fast track courses, took the leap, went under a network, and now she's killing it. But when I spoke to her, she was like, I did not understand how hard this would be. Mm. It's not for the faint hearted. I've gone home with no money. I've had to graft. I've had leads that have gone nowhere. She's done all of those things. And she said, there's one thing that I would say to people, it's basically not for fannies. And I think that's pretty much yeah. how she phrased it. And I was like, no, you're right. It isn't. Oh no, it's a tough career. And I think that is one of those things. And it's tough from a CMAP perspective. It's tough from the moment you get into it. And my dad was head of training and development for some of the largest corporates in this industry. So he taught people, he wrote the exams on how to pass all these exams in Connells, for example, he designed the entire training platforms for that. He would say it all the time. He was like, it's like a hockey stick learning curve. He said, they get in, they don't know anything. He said, and the next thing you know, you're off and you're going to get the exams. Now we're going to put them in the intensives and then we're going to do the series. Then we're going to take them to CAS. And he was like, if they're there two years later, 40, 50% of them will leave because it's not what they thought. It's late night, it's long work. So that's an interesting point. On just what you were saying there, you talk about your old student, this idea of, I'd love to know what career transformations you've seen. So the ones that you've seen for your clients who passed those CMAP exams, what are some of the stuff you've seen and what are the proud moments that you've seen? I think for me, there's, I always have a soft spot for people who have no experience in financial services. And that's because they really go into it blind. They've read a little bit about mortgage advice, a little bit about CMAP, and then they turn up with me on Monday morning and they have are just blown right out of the water with it all. But to watch them transform from biology teachers, HR managers, mm. lorry drivers, whatever it is, to then six months down the line, see them get CMAP qualified, get a role with a network, be on their way to cat status and be bringing home money that they could do whilst working from home, which for a lot of people, that's the driver with mortgage advice. Those are my favorite examples because they've completely transformed 70 hours a week of driving to being able to sit at home and package together cases and come out with the, the same income is exactly what they wanted. And that's, those are always my favorite ones. Now, if you want to know how much it costs to take a CMAP exam, then check out this video where Charlotte breaks down the costs involved, not only for the exams, but also the studying and everything required in order to get qualified as a mortgage advisor.